priming the pump, creatively speaking. So is there a point in bringing grins and giggles here into our subtle desert? Hi, I'm Dr. K.P. McKee, founder and executive director of A Spacious Place Creativity and Spirituality Center. As we walk through today's creativity practice, we would love to hear from you. You can enter your comments or your questions or suggestions into the comment box on your mobile device or on your computer. And for today's exercise, we just need a few supplies. Um, it would be helpful to have a pencil with a good eraser and then a pen, some kind of thesaurus. And if you have an internet, the uh, Zone uh, website, and I will go through that a little bit. And then we also have a template on our site called Limericks and Lyrics. It's actually in the comments. Okay, and it's in the comment box as well. Um, and you can use that or you can make your own and we will show you how to do that too. So we've been talking about the fact that in times like the one that we are in right now, our souls can feel partially listless. And um, we talked about the term acedia for that feeling of kind of that goes along with hardship and the fact that it's kind of hard to get ourselves up and do anything and we feel like the spud here. And uh, we just, the chores, our spiritual practices kind of feel like a chore and we just don't have any initiative to do anything. But the creative act can help get, prime the pump to get that irrigation system of rejuvenation out to our soul desert. And today we're going to look at how childlike humor can be a conduit for that. And that can really prime the pump for our creativity because there is a child in all of us and that is restorative and helpful for us. So today we're going to delight in rhymes and in simple poetry and in simple blocks, simple songs which are the building blocks for other creativity. So we're going to begin with a basic poem that is very accessible for all of us, and it's called a limerick. And the master of limericks was Edward Lear. And I would like to share some of his limericks with us now so that you can kind of get a sense of the flow and how that works. And then we're going to create one of our own, and then we'd love you to create one on your own. So here we go. There was a young lady whose chin resembled the point of a pen. So she made it, had it made sharp and purchased a harp, and she played several tunes on her chin. There was an old person of Dean who dined on one pea and one bean. For he said, that more than that, that would make me too fat, that cautious old person of Dean. There was an old man with a beard who said, it is just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren, have all built their nests in my beard. There was a long, young lady of the ride, whose shoestrings were seldom untied. She purchased some clogs and some small spotted dogs, and frequently walked about right. There was an old man on a hill, who seldom, if ever, stood still. He ran up and down in his grandmother's gown, which adorns that old man on the hill. There was a young lady whose bonnet came untied when the birds sate upon it. But she said, I don't care. All the birds in the air are welcome to sit on my bonnet. And one last one. There was an old man in a tree who was horribly bored by a bee. When they said, does it buzz? He replied, yes, it does. It's a regular brute of a bee. So we are going to do a number of our own now, which I have started. I'm going to do it with a pen here so that you can see. But this is the reason I'm suggesting a pencil, because that way we can erase it. And almost always you'll need to do that when writing. Um, so this is a syllable chart, which I have started. And each line recommended means one syllable. And as you probably learned in elementary school, uh, a syllable is one class. So syllable is three class. And uh, if you need to look further, you can look in your dictionary or your thesaurus, and it will separate out the syllables so you can see. And every now and then you can fudge it, but you don't want to do it too much. 
So uh, based on Edward Lear's interest in limericks, we're going to start out. There once was a man from Atlantis. All right. So then I have an A here, which means I want to rhyme with every time it says A, it needs to rhyme with at least that last syllable of Atlantis. And so I went through rhymestone, and I want to show you rhymestone here because it is an excellent resource. And hopefully you can see it okay here on your screen. So you just type in the word that you want to rhyme, and then it will give you two syllable words, three syllable words, four syllable words, and then what we call slant rhymes, ones that almost rhyme but not exactly. And it also provides a, a thesaurus, which is a, a book of synonyms. I have a couple of thesauruses here. And so maybe you have something you want to say, but it doesn't quite rhyme. You can go to the thesaurus and see if you can find a synonym for it that it does. So I've been talking to David about our limerick, and he came up with one because I had told him that I found in Rhyme Zone uh, three words that I thought worked pretty well for it. So he's going to uh, read me the next part of this. There once was a man from Atlantis who went into town. And into is two syllables, so I'll do it this way. Taking chances. Taking is two syllables, and so is chances. All right, now we have two beast. So these two, the ends of these lines need to rhyme. They don't need to rhyme up here, just with each other. So, what were we thinking? He bumped a red car. He bumped. And bumped is one syllable. Here. <laughs> a red car. That crashed. In a bar. All right, and then we're back to running with Atlantis, is the last syllable. So we're doing. We can do it in pencil and go over it if you want. Um, I'm trying to remember what I said. And he. He got away on a mantis, he, didn't you say? And he got away on a We can yep, do mantis. He got away on a mantis. We'll do mantis. Sometimes it helps me to do the writing word at the, the end and then move back to the end. Did you see he got a, he, and, and he, he got away? And. There we go. So there was a man from Atlantis who went into town taking chances. He bumped a red car that crashed in a bar and he got away on a mantis. Probably mantis was less happy about that. Uh, so we have a form here like this. So you can start with what there once was Edward Lear style, but you can also just to, uh, choose three syllables of your own and do something entirely different. And we would love to uh, read your limericks if you would send them in. And they are just wonderful childlike poetry that is fairly accessible and easy to write. It kind of gets to, or reduces the one for writing other things. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a song to a familiar tune. And it can be any tune that you are familiar with as long as you can divide it up into the syllable chart. Uh, you probably don't want to put it out on YouTube or whatever if it's a song that's not in a, a public domain. But uh, we are going to do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which also is the ABC song, if you say and you'll recognize the tunes the same. So we're going to use that for ours. So I came up with a song that I'm going to uh, now line out. I did it in pencil to the ABC song, and I'm going to do it now in pencil so that you can see. I think my other one will not work. And then maybe help me come up with a song title for it. So um, I have the song title here. We'll do that last. And then I'm the lyricist. So I'm put my name in here. And we remember the twinkle, twinkle, little star. And instead, I'm doing washing. Washing. 
I'm replacing those with the twinkles till they're clean. And there is one syllable, so it fits on this line here. This also is here for you on the side, so you can download it. And then I'm doing, but for the next line, I'm doing drying. To a nice buffed sheen. And you can see the breaks here. So where I'm doing is just one syllable between each break. And then slapping the two syllables. So S L A P and then the rest is here on this next one. And you can make your own. Slapping on low shun. Pure. And now I'm down here. Makes one syllable. My hands. Oat. Couture. And then washing. Washing, germs, uh, one syllable, way, second syllable, last line, keeps, one syllable, the, nas, teeth, second syllable, so on another line, bugs, that if you sing it twice while you're washing your hands, you have done your 20 seconds. So, do you have an idea for a title? A little basic, like, hand-washing song? <laughs> bugs Away. Keep the bugs Away. That's much better. So, we hope that you will write some new lyrics to some of your favorite songs. It's something we do every year at our children's camp, and then we learn the words and perform it. So, if you have a performance you would like to share with us of your rendition of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with new words, we would very much love to see that. Um, so, uh, if you found this helpful, we hope you will like it and re-watch and share it with other people. And I'm going to sing our Buzz Away song now so that uh, you can get a sense of how this works. And then we'll be back on May 24th as we continue priming the pump, creatively speaking. And we hope you'll join us for that. And, and then after singing, I'm going to close with a prayer. Washing, washing till they're clean. Drying to a nice buff sheen. Slapping on lotion pure. Makes my hands oat couture. Washing, washing germs away. Keeps the nasty bugs at bay. We thank you, Creator, for the challenge and satisfaction of rhymes. The hope we find in grins and giggles. And for the children of all ages who share their souls in their simple